and this is Stack Overflow Inverted Index. So in, in general, inverted indexes, uh, again, it's a, it's a data structure. Okay, so uh, it's, it's a data structure like a map uh, from terms to a list of identifiers where those terms are actually present. That's a simple definition of this. Uh, uh, and these are really useful when you have a huge data set and uh, you want to do retrieval out of such, such data sets, then uh, inverted index is just uh, a necessity. You cannot do without that. But, but the good thing is uh, inverted index is a very straightforward application of the MapReduce framework. Uh, and uh, this, this derives from the fact that uh, <coughs> what you're basically trying to do in inverted index is you are uh, trying to group things uh, based on uh, certain keys. And this grouping function is something which is very central to the MapReduce framework. So the examples uh, where inverted indexes are used, of course, the search engine, which everybody knows about. And there, uh, the inverted index help in uh, quicker retrieval of, the, of uh, whatever search terms you have searched on. And then uh, this is, the other one is applications where you want terms to be annotated with further information. Now this is, uh, uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with uh, text analytics. And in text analytics, we do a lot of uh, uh, annotations. Uh, so there's a lot of algorithms where we try to figure out what this, this piece of data actually means. So we figure out entities in the text. It could be a person name, places, organization, and then the different and things uh, more than that. Okay, <clears throat> so you could, you could build an inverted index on, this, on the sentences being the, your map key and the annotated terms on, on, on that sentence going uh, as, 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 as the value. This, this will help in your, uh, again, uh, the, uh, the downward processing of uh, analytics on, on those uh, initial text processing which is done here. Okay, so this slide is a schematic representation of the, of the inverted index. So uh, your document one, document two, document three. Of course, so we remove the stop word list from that. And then on the right hand side, you can see uh, the data structure which is uh, built. So best is present in two different documents, blue in one and three. Sorry, the best was present in the second document and blue in first and third document and so on and so forth. Here is the structure. Actually, uh, the structure which I'm talking about, this is how uh, uh, I will be talking about the patterns uh, when I talk about in the class. Uh, so we'll start with the description, then we'll look at the structure of those patterns uh, with a diagram, and then we'll move at uh, looking at the applicability of such things, then use cases of such things, and then examples based on that. Okay, so uh, this this is, uh, so this is what explains your inverted index. So the mapper is taking in the documents, you have the keywords, unique IDs, going to the partitioner, and then the reducer co combining those things down. So very simple. And, and just don't forget, uh, don't forget uh, what, what is being done here is, is a pretty complex algorithm of uh, creating inverted index on a huge set of data. And this small uh, set of diagrams can explain everything here. Okay, so uh, you understand the mapper part of this, so you understand, so combiners in this is, is not really useful because uh, 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 here uh, most of the data that you have on the mapper side is actually going to be transferred uh, in, in, in mostly uh, the verbatim form to the reducer side. So uh, even if you try to combine something on the combiner side, it, it doesn't really give you too much involved, though in, in some cases where uh, the output from your reducer is going to be uh, concatenated together, then probably in, in those cases uh, it makes sense to do the combiner. But uh, again, uh, that, that's, uh, that doesn't provide any benefit in terms of uh, the bytes of the data which will be transferred across the network. Of course, partitioner is, is important here because uh, there could be skew in the data. There are certain terms which will happen more, many more number of times than uh, other terms which are very infrequent in the document. And now if you end up uh, with skew in the data, 
uh, with a hash uh, partitioner, the default partitioner, uh, then uh, you might be in trouble. Uh, so uh, in cases where you have an idea as to there is definitely a skew in the data or you have done some statistical analysis on this data before uh, 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 giving it to the inverted index, then it makes sense to write your own partitioner. The performance, uh, we just, uh, so, so if you look at the performance, there's nothing uh, very complex being done. Uh, uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's whatever time a MapReduce framework will take on your data in transferring from the MapReduce map side to the reduce side. Uh, apart from that, there's, there's nothing involved. But the cost of the computation actually goes uh, in the parsing of the content in the mappers. So, for example, if you are uh, just building an inverted index on the words, then that's uh, probably an easier job. But if you're doing an inverted index, for example, on, uh, 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 for example, uh, uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, the, the, the sentence stuff I, I just talked about, right? text analytics on sentences. So, so there, uh, there's a significant amount of uh, processing involved because you do tokenization, you, you figure out sentences in, in, in that document, then you go ahead and do parts of speech tagging over there, and then uh, another set of entity recognitions on top of that. So it, that could be time, time consuming. But again, that's, that's part of the, the computation cost of your uh, job itself. Uh, there could be hot spots in the keys. We, we talked about that. Let's move forward. Uh, Okay, use custom partitioners in the case of SKUs in the index keys. And yeah, do remove your stop words and common words uh, because uh, you don't want to end up uh, uh, with a the with uh, a million document entries in your uh, inverted index data structure. The use cases, we talked about these, uh, the Google search engine. Then uh, Wikipedia reference inverted index. Now this is uh, one of the applications uh, which is done on the stack flow data itself. So uh, what it does is, uh, so the references you find to uh, Wikipedia inside of the posts and the comments in stack overflow data. Uh, those things uh, uh, are actually, uh, can be added uh, uh, on, on, a, on a Wikipedia page. Which, which actually reference back into the posts or the comments where uh, those references happen. So uh, that's about uh, actually building an inverted index. Maintaining additional annotated terms, information on terms. So this uh, I just talked about uh, in the previous slide, uh, that's the text analytics. And creating index on overflow, stack overflow data. This is something which we'll do as part of the project. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, so we'll uh, do a short demo of uh, the Stack Overflow indexer example. Uh, here uh, we are actually looking at uh, the data which is available in the posts.xml and the comments.xml. Actually, these are very, very huge files. Uh, so the, the data which I'll use is going to be a subset of these. And our job here is to index, inver create an inverted index from terms to post ID or comment ID they refer to. Take care of removing stop words. Okay, so uh, let's see a demo of this. So before we do this, let's uh, look at the code for this. Okay, let's let's just a quick quick walkthrough of the code for for this part. Can you see the code? Okay. So let's first have a look at the index, inverted index stack overflow. The main program is pretty simple. Uh, 
We have the mapper here, we have the combiner, we have the reducer. I've used a combiner here because I'm uh, concatenating uh, information from uh, different records. Uh, and uh, I have a list of stop, spot stop words which I add as a cache file here and then I use uh, this in the distributed cache uh, in the mappers. Let's see the mapper here. Okay, so uh, before uh, the map is run, there is this uh, setup method in which uh, the stop word uh, file is read from the distributed cache and then the stuff is put in a, a list of string stop words. Again, uh, thing to, uh, w uh, one thing you should uh, keep in mind is uh, using these kind of stru uh, data structures uh, and uh, uh, probably in this case over here, the size is not going to inflate too much. But these can be scalability concerns if you are, uh, uh, if the context of your program is uh, uh, is is, uh, is going to blow up this data structure because you could easily get a out of memory error here. Okay, so in the mapper, uh, well, it's, it's a very simple thing which I'm doing. So I, uh, um, the, the <clears throat> the files I'm reading in, in these mappers are actually uh, both the uh, comments file and uh, the posts file. And I distinguish these uh, with using uh, these two uh, uh, distinct fields which appear in those two files. So body and the text. So body appears uh, in the posts and text is in the comments. Actually, uh, so the keywords here and the value ID type and then these the keyword uh, the, the keyword is, is actually the word on which uh, you are uh, uh, creating the map on uh, and the value IDs are the ones which you have uh, so, uh, the, the only only word document in which you have find this value ID the reducer is uh, also fairly simple so uh, I start doing a string builder in which I do append of all the values which are there for this, this term uh, which the reducer is processing and then uh, I write it out. Okay. Now the, I, I talked about a scalability concern here. The scalability issue actually comes here. One thing which I haven't done in, in, in the reducer here is uh, most of the reducers if you're doing a uh, inverted index they will go ahead and uh, do an ordering on the values as well. So, so the MapReduce framework on itself doesn't do an ordering on the value, but uh, here in the reducer, it's good to do an ordering on the value because when you're doing searches, it's good to have uh, uh, the documents in, in which the term is happening, those documents sorted by their IDs. Uh, now, doing that sorting will impose uh, a lot of strain in terms of the memory on your reducer. And uh, you can you could end up getting out of memory errors here. So we'll have a look at uh, the scalable uh, inverted index, and that's a part of your project that you will do in the course. Okay, uh, so uh, I think as far as looking at this code is concerned, uh, it's fine. Now let's. Uh, have a look at this. Just run this example. So uh, the input here is uh, containing uh, uh, close to maybe the record number of records are not many in here because uh, we we don't have much time in terms of running those. So uh, thousand uh, I I think picked up thousand records from uh, the posts and thousand from the comments. And then ultimately, in the end, you will see uh, uh, that an inverted index is built around the terms which appear in these two documents, and they will uh, map from the terms to uh, the the IDs for these posts and the comments. And of course, uh, uh, the stop words have been used uh, through the distributed cache. 
Okay, so I guess it's uh, done. Let's uh, have a look at the results. Uh, it, the result itself would not be very clean because uh, for getting a clean output you will have to do a lot of processing of the data. Uh, but still we'll give you an idea as to how this works. So it's running. And there you have. Okay, I'll show you. So this is some of the data. Uh, and because we hadn't cleaned on, uh, on the terms, so you see junk over there, but uh, still junk uh, doesn't mean that uh, the execution was wrong. Things are fine because, uh, uh, for example, if you look at week, that appear, seem to appear, appear in these places, so in answers, in questions, and these are the IDs, and then you have the IDs. 